This is the eBay Scraper Sourcer Google Sheet, and I created this Google Sheet to actually take search results from eBay, bring them into Google Sheets, pull all the product data, and then also find sources of those products, potential sources of those eBay products. And so the way it works is you just take the URL, you copy it, you come over to the Google Sheet, you paste it. And that URL, by the way, from eBay is a search URL. So after you've done search results, you then copy that URL over here. And you go to eBay Scraper Sourcer and you just go to Extract Current eBay Page and it will simply extract the product data from that search results page. Now, for those of you who have already been using this tool, I did um, improve upon the uh, sales history, sales store, feedback scores, number sold. That data, which had temporarily um, had, uh, there was kind of an issue with that data temporarily. So I did just fix that literally today. So this is now version 1.8. So if you don't have a version 1.8, but you have a previous version, make sure that you get the updated version. And for those of you who have uh, don't already have the sheet, you can always download and get access to the sheet. Just see the description of this video um, for links. Now, to take a look at what's happening here, just to show you that the data is valid, right? The second listing, for instance, 688 uh, units sold. If we open that listing right here on eBay, it is in fact 688 sold. You can see also the uh, sales history of the product by just clicking that sales history link i did the same thing on the research template where it has that sales history link so you can see the actual sales and another thing is that you have the actual seller store url as well ebay is now doing this verify oh boy okay so uh click on the food that tastes sweet oops sorry not that one and sorry about having this happen in the middle of the video okay so now i'm on the store swanson health products so this is a pretty you know uh this is a fairly large somewhat well-known store and you can see all of their products there okay now um you can also see the feedback score which we saw as well on the listing when the product wherever that product was here it is right five three oh nine two one so you can see that feedback score okay now you can still open the ebay link from here as well that's kind of a convenience as you move over to the sources and for the sourcing you can simply just click ebay scraper sourcer start sourcing from row one and it what it and what it does is it tries to find potential sources of the products and the domains that it specifically looks for actually come from a list of supplier domains that I have on the sheet so that's currently how this works this is how it has worked now for a couple of years that I've had this out is that it's worked with an actual list of websites a large list of websites and that's where it draws its sources from um, it is possible for the future for the near future that I might uh, do something where Perhaps it pulls URLs without actually needing that list. Um, so that's something that uh, might actually happen with the future update. But right now, it does pull specifically from a very long list, however, of online stores for sources. So you're just going to get the URLs if you want. I can take a look at a few of them. Um, this eBay product, I believe I already had open from my last video, which is the Arrowhead Mills Organic Buckwheat Pancake mix and you can see for instance the first source that it pulls up is this amazon source which is similar but it's a three pack and you can you know navigate and find that there are more sources this one is actually the exact match right and that's 13.99 in the previous video i did a manual search and i found the product uh, on a, another website so you can do that as well but that's basically how this works okay you can check target as well just want to show you a few sources just so you, so you can see that it in fact does find sources 
Now, once you have this, um, another thing that this then does is creates a product list, right? So over here, I have a products list, and I actually started to do one before, so that's why it's got stuff on it. So I'll go to uh, reset products list first. That will clear the list of whatever's on here. Okay. Um, so now I'll go to products list and start generating list. And what that does is it takes each of these products, puts it on the sheet, and then it takes each of these sources and it lists the sources one after the other on the products list sheet, right? As you see here, right? So we have, these are all that same first product, but these are each the different sources of that product being listed on a separate row so that you can then get the product data and calculate, say, for instance, the profit for each of these sources separately because they're different sources they might have different prices for instance right um, they may even have different titles some of them might not even be exact matches so they need to be separate right they have to be in separate rows so you can manage this now um, as far as getting the supplier data in here um, software is one option and I had used I've been using SKU grid uh, for now a few years, that was the software, kind of like the go-to software to get uh, product data for a large number of various suppliers. Because the way it works with suppliers, unfortunately, is that their websites are all different. And so software typically has to be programmed to fetch the data from those specific websites. Right? So there isn't really a software that does like any website in the world, but they will do, um, you know, a large number of different websites. And so SkewGrid uh, can do that, and that's what I've used. So for SkewGrid, um, basically I have a SkewGrid product data fetcher here that I used to use with the AP, SkewGrid API. So that's a little more advanced if you have a SkewGrid API account. You know, that's a more expensive, uh, more advanced option. But if you have a more basic SkewGrid account, um, you can just put the links into SkewGrid uh, and pull back out the price data put it on a sheet and then this tool will like just grab the price data and put it in place right I didn't demonstrate I'm not demonstrating that in this video I'm just kind of quickly describing that process so you know that it's available but um, I have other content where I've actually shown that process uh, in completion okay um, so there are different options depending on the types of suppliers that you're dealing with um, or you might be able to get that product data. Now, another option that's completely outside of this is that instead of using the sourcer and then not having the product data, which you don't have here, you just have URLs, you can use uh, my Google Shopping browser automation. And what this does is it actually, um, you will feed it a list of products. So you would take these products results from here, you'll put it on a sheet, and I don't, unfortunately, I don't have that template open right now, but you'll put it on that template sheet and then this will actually open up search those products on google it will actually go to, into google shopping and find sources and when it does that you actually get the price data as well with this okay and this is a free platform called otoma if you don't know um, for browser automation and so i have this posted on otoma check the description description of this video and you'll see a link to my otoma um my otoma front i guess you could call it it's not a store because they don't charge but my atoma uh, page then let's say okay with all my different browser automations on it and um that's another option to source instead of using this but it is a slower option because it will be inside of the browser this is faster because it's programmatic it's using code right and it's pulling uh from search engines right away so those are going to be the options so basically that's what this system does uh, you can see the feedback score sell store history the number of times things sold if they sold in the last 24 hours i'm not even sure if that's even displayed on the page um because let's see they have had number sold oh here it is yeah four sold in the last 24 hours is still on the page yes okay this is where it is so yeah four sold is still on the page so this does actually grab that as well off the page okay so as long as eBay is still displaying that on the page 
right? Then I'm also like scraping that off the page. Okay. So um that's basically it. So that's basically it. Um I missed a mark. Check the description of this video for any links to this tool or anything else uh related to it. Also, you can leave comments, questions, or suggestions below. And look forward to hearing from you or seeing you around in another video.